Yeah, uh, that's an extremely important question. Today, probably most of the entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs who want to take entrepreneurship as a, as a profession, as a career choice, are really in, in a great uh, problem because people really don't know what is going to happen to the market, what is going to happen to a product in future, the things are changing so fast. The product life cycle, technology life cycle uh, has become so small that if you really want to invest in a project uh, with a view of say five years down the line or three years down the line, uh, it becomes quite difficult for an entrepreneur because entrepreneur also knows that three years down the line probably the product uh, may not have any market at all because uh, because of uh, the rate of technology and product obsolescence. You know? So in that sense, you know, I think also it is um, sometimes uh, may make sense for many people actually also to understand the rate of change as such, you know, because we all always say that, okay, things are changing very fast, technology is changing very fast, the product is changing, I'm, I'm getting obsolete very fast, <laughs> but actually, what is the rate of this fastness, you know, how fast is fast, so, uh, so I think um, to give you an idea um, that how fast now it is changing, uh, uh, we can take the example of the chess game you know the game of chess, chess. game of chess uh, yeah game of chess when it was invented it was invented many years back in india uh, the king wanted uh, to feel as if he is in the battlefield when there is no battle so he wanted someone to invent a game uh, where uh, by playing that game he would feel that he is on the battlefield all the time. So the person who invented the chess game came to him and told him, okay my lord this is the game probably which you can play when you are uh, here and still it will give you a kind of you know a feeling of uh, being in the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So and the king was absolutely delighted when he uh, saw the whole game. So, so after the game was over, um, he, came, he knew all the rules and everything about the game and when he was very pleased with that, so he asked uh, the inventor uh, or, or uh, the, per another, the person who re uh, really discovered this, the whole game, uh, asking that uh, what you would like to take as reward. Oh. Uh, so this person uh, told him that, uh, my lord, uh, I'm not a very ambitious person. I don't have a uh, very ambitious goal uh, for me. I don't want to be very rich or nothing. So I'll be happy even if you give something very simple, small to me. Uh, yeah, what? What do you want? Okay, I want some rice. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, for uh, inventing this game. Okay, okay, tell me how much? It's very little. Say you uh, you put one grain of rice in the first square of the board, mm -hmm. then you put two square, double the amount in the next square, so it will become two. So then you double it in the third square, it will become four grains of rice. Then you further double it eight, so one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. That way you keep on doubling. So there are you know, sixty-four squares on the chessboard. Mm. So till you come to the sixty-fourth uh, square, whatever is the amount there, you give me that much a price. So King was very okay, only this much. Fine. So yeah, called for his people and asked them to just um, you know go and get that much a price and give it to the person. So after some time, his aide comes and tells, my lord, uh, we really can't uh, give that much a price to this person. The king was really, what, what nonsense? He, and uh, in my kingdom, I was asking you to give that much a price, you can't give. 
So yes, uh, then the aide was telling that my lord, the amount of grain this person is asking, that would be sufficient to cover the whole Mount Everest. That much of uh, oh. grain. So, so, you know, what, what, what was this um, growth? I mean, why it's, uh, you know, it um, turned out to be so enormous, the amount of the, the 60 post grain. This is the one grain supply is two grain, four. This is a growth which is called exponential growth. You know, doubling uh, with every square, you know, the doubling them. Squaring. Yeah, squaring. So this is, uh, you know, so every time you double this, so it's, it's an exponential growth. And this growth, when it starts, it appears as kind of really innocent looking process, slow moving process, one grain separate, two grain. But when it picks up the momentum, it actually, you know, sweeps everything away, you know, because it, it's, comes with such huge kind of, you know, force, you know, it's, it's something like, you know, you um, like uh, watching a moving train, um, suppose the metro station, when you look uh, at the train, you see a light very far, but suddenly it comes, you know, it zooms past you, you know, it, you know, it mesmerizes you when it actually reaches you. So that is that kind of process today we are observing in daily life. This, I mean, you know, uh, there's a Moore's law, uh, which says in 65, uh, Gordon Moore, he was the co-founder of Intel. When uh, he was telling that um, in almost, you know, um, every year, the uh, number of transistors we put in, 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 in one square inch, it is uh, doubling every year. And later it was slightly modified, it was okay, every two years is doubling. So, doubling of the number of transistors in a microchip, you know, with every say two years, and now sometimes you know, people are saying it's about doubling in every 18 months. That means that your, your, the, the power of your computer, say two years back what it was, today the same computer would be doing two times more. So, so if you, um, if you think back that when it started that uh, you know in the beginning of that uh, uh, the, the, the computer era if it started that uh, today we have almost crossed the half of the uh, half of the chess board so now we see the the, the force the momentum you know and that's why today what we see that almost anything that in the um, um, let's uh, say in electronics that come to the market today in about six seven months time already it is getting upset so it's so fast and now using that computer technology in all other sectors also we see that movement you know so i think that is a a, a change that entrepreneurs have to keep in mind it is kind of a tsunami of technology you know and now how to ride that tsunami wave, you know, and one has to prepare differently for uh, for that, you know, scenario, yeah. Right, so one does need to, 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 to act differently and react differently. So narrow, narrowing that down to, what advice could you give to somebody to plan a career in this situation? Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the first uh, probably important, um, important element in this planning process for your career is to, is to prepare your mindset to tackle very high uncertainty. Because uh, by nature, all of us, we want towards a certain future, towards certainty, oh. because suppose if we invest some money, oh. we want to be certain that after two, three years, how much return I am going to get on this investment. Okay, uh, uh, from another side, always you can say that if um, uh, if there is no uncertainty, there is, there is no profit to be made, because if everything is certain, everybody knows that how much money you invest 
uh, how much money you need to invest today to get that um, you know why amount of money after two years if everybody knows then everybody uh, if find that is a profitable venture everybody will come there so you don't make any extra profit um, on that because there is uncertainty and some people are not ready to take risk venture in uncertain world and entrepreneurs always venture in an uncertain world and that's why they derive the profit by making that kind of choices uh, so but still there is uncertainty but still there is also there is also some kind of certainty for the entrepreneurs because they could plan they could factor in those uncertainty they would calculate different scenarios so they could uh, kind of figure out the probability of success for a venture you know uh, and people um, who are confident to take a chance thinking that their probability calculations are okay mm -hmm. uh, that their return they, they are going the most likely they are going to get a certain amount of return after some time they go for it and that those are the entrepreneurs they actually they uh, they try to um, uh, they try to minimize the risk by really understanding uh, the scenario, planning various scenarios, and then they get that confidence that yeah, probably their um, scenario uh, prediction uh, would be correct, and because of that confidence, uh, you know, they take that kind of risk, and they ultimately many of them become successful. But obviously, success is still not guaranteed because that this is a probability of success. You know, that's why many entrepreneurs also fail, even in normal, um, less uncertain situation. Then also people do fail. But here now what happens that even that kind of scenario planning is becoming very difficult because it's so much of change that you really don't know that what is going to happen two years down the line with this kind of change. So that requires a different kind of planning and particularly a different kind of mindset and we have to really acquire that mindset mindset to really feel comfortable with high level of uncertainty you know and probably as we go along you know, further we discuss we'll uh, you know, know about that how really one can one can reduce um, uh, one can reduce that uncertainty for um, uh, for oneself and still increase the probability of success you know? I mean there, there are um, um, certain thought processes uh, you know uh, you have to uh, really master you have to think in a particular way then then even in a highly uncertain world also you can make really um, you, you, you can achieve success, you can make good amount of profit and probably super profit sometimes, you know, because remember that high uncertainty means also very high chance of big profit. More the uncertainty, more is the chances of profit, but also there will be more failures. You know? So, uh, and that scenario requires uh, kind of planning which would be different from those um, you know, entrepreneurial plans uh, which we, we have been used to so far. Uh, yeah, so um, I think um, with this, um, I also find that let us uh, probably we can uh, take a look at the kind of world we are going to see in the near future in different sectors. Uh, and after that, probably we can again discuss about. Um, about creating an entrepreneurial uh, venture uh, and or how to really plan a, a entrepreneurial career once you get a slightly better idea about the scenario we are looking at in the coming years.